Hey there, everybody. It's your boy, Chili. Welcome back to Beginner C++. This tutorial, we're going to talk about function calls and some basic C++ syntax. Now, we have some unfinished business in the form of the put pixel numbers. But before we talk about that, let's talk about pixels. Now, I'm sure we all know what a pixel is in a general sense. But do you know where the word comes from? It's actually a combination of the words picture and element. You slam them together and you don't think about it too hard and you get pixel. It's a kind of fake portmanteau or a fartmanteau as I like to call it. So yeah, all images on the computer are made up of pixels and it may not look like it, but take a look at this uh, modern masterpiece. You look at this and you say, I don't see the pixels chili, but you zoom that motherfucker in and sure as hell, there they are. Why am I telling you this? Well, I want to get home the idea that if you have the power to set the pixel colors of any pixel on the screen, you have the power to generate any image possible. And that's a lot of power. First you get the money, then you get the pixels, then you get the women. Now in order to manipulate those pixels, to bend them to your will, uh, you need a way of indicating which pixel it is you want to change. The way we do that is with X and Y coordinates. We use two values, X and Y, X indicating the horizontal position, Y indicating the vertical position. You put them together and you get any pixel on the screen. Starting at the top left, 0, 0, and moving right and down. Now this is a little different than you might uh, be familiar with from, say, math class. In math class, the y, uh, the y coordinates, they are positive increasing upwards, but in computers, they increase downwards. All right, let's take a look at that put pixel function now. See if we can't decipher its hidden meanings. So what we're going to do is, well, first let's uh, run it for old time's sake. And there she is, good old pixel, top left corner. Let's change some numbers, shall we? A big part of programming is fucking around with stuff and seeing what happens. Unlike in chemistry, where if you fuck around and see what happens... Probably end up with yourself killed. A nice acid burn. Oh shit, our pixel's gone! Oh, there it is. Whew! Alright. So, change the first value, pixel moves horizontally to the right, probably indicating that this controls the x value, or the x coordinate. Likewise, change the second number, and we should expect it to move vertically, and it does indeed move down. So yeah, first two values, x and y coordinate, they control the position of the pixel. i just like to note that the, our screen here is 800 wide by 600 tall. Now, the last three values, what could they control? Let's set the last two to zero and see what shakes. And the pixel has changed from white to red, indicating that these values control the color. To make a long story short, the first value controls the amount of red in the color, the second one is the green, the last one is the blue, RGB. The values range from 0 to 255. Now, if you were perhaps adventurous, you might have put large values in the X or the Y. And if you put, say, a large value in the Y here, run that, start without debugging, you're going to get, your program is going to shit the bed, basically. Close that. So don't draw outside of the lines, kitties. Color within the lines. Uh, now, what's interesting is if you try to run this not without debugging, but try to run it with debugging, you get a little different scenario here. Now you got three options. Oh, choices, choices. My favorite whenever I get a problem in life is just try to ignore it. Pretend like it's not there. Doesn't seem to work. Huh. Same in real life, ain't it? All right, let's try to continue. Nope, can't do that either. Well, thank you for giving me three options two of which are completely useless. So let's break some shit, because I'm pissed off. 
And if we break, we end up in this weird limbo state. What the hell is this shit? Uh, call stack. Autos. My name is Otto, and I love to get Blato. All right, so this is uh, what what is known as the, the debugger. And it's very useful, and we'll be spending a lot of time here, but not today. So if you want to get out of this debugger limbo, click on the red square, and let's, uh, let's go home. So we'll go click back here on game.cpp, double click, and we're back to our put pixel. So yeah, you keep your values within a sane range. That's not good. The screen is 800 by 600, so the pixels range from 0 in the X from 0 to 799, and in the Y from 0 to 599. Just take a look at this, 799, 599, and if I run that, run a Windows debugger, and you see it runs fine now, no problems, and our red pixel is down here on the bottom right corner, just as you would expect. So that's what these numbers do in the put pixel function. But what is a function really? That's what I'm here to tell you. A function is kind of like a magic spell. Yeah, you put a little alakazam in there and it does some shit for you. It's like, hey guy, get in the kitchen and make me a pie. Only it's like, hey guy, get on the screen and, you know, put a pixel. And it will oblige, which is kind of sweet. It's really good because you don't have to know how it works. All you got to know is the name of the function and what the numbers do. And as long as you know that, you can put pixels on the screen. It's one of the benefits of functions. As a programmer, you're going to call thousands of functions. Some of the other benefits of a function are, let's say you want to do the same thing a bunch of different times. If you didn't have functions, you'd have to copy and paste all the code every single time you wanted to do it, every single place. And it's a big waste of space, it's a big pain in the ass. With functions, you just put the code in one spot, in the body of the function, and then you call that function wherever you want, whenever you want. You get a little booty call, you get some action. And one of the beautiful things about that is let's say later on you want to change how the function works. Well, if you weren't using functions, you'd have to change every single place where you copy and pasted that code. But if you're using functions, you just change the body of the function and all those function calls, all their behavior will change. So how will you know a function call when you meet one in the wild? They all basically have this same format here. You've got the name of the function, you've got some name here. You've got parentheses, open and closing. And inside the parentheses, you have zero or more function parameters separated by commas. And that's your function call right here. Now, to the left of the function, you got this guy here called graphics. And what this is, is it's an object. Graphics is an object. You might know, you might have heard, C++ is an object-oriented language. Well, here's the motherfucking object. Now, the put pixel function is a member of the graphics object. So when you want to access put pixel, you do graphics and then you do a dot to say I want one of graphics' members and then you put the put pixel. It's pretty straightforward. We'll be talking a lot more about objects later on, but for now all you need to know is that if you want to get at put pixel, you got to put a graphics dot in front of it. And at the end here, we've got the semicolon and the semicolon is like the period in the English language. It says this is the end of the sentence, the C++ sentence. Only we don't call it a sentence, we call it a statement, but same difference. Now remember I said that in your career as a programmer, you're gonna be calling thousands and thousands of functions, and that shit ain't easy to remember, especially since case matters. Put pixel with a capital P is completely different than put pixel with a lowercase p. So. It's fucking hard to remember that shit. But here's something pretty fucking sweet. Let's type a new line with uh, put pixel. G, F, and holy shit, the Visual Studio's reading my mind, man. It's freaking me out. So yeah, this is called IntelliSense. And the Visual Studio is gonna try to figure out what you wanna type. So even if you've forgotten that it's graphics, if you can sort of remember the first few words, it'll give you that. It's not a huge help, but it's okay. And if you press tab, 
it's going to complete that for you. Now press dot to get at the graphics members. Now this is good because this tells you every single member that is in the graphics object. So even if you don't know the names of any of the members, you can read this and figure out what you want. And oh, it's right there, put pixel. You can click on it. You can double click on it. It'll put your put pixel in there. You can start typing put pixel and it'll highlight it. And then if you type the next thing, which is an open parenthesis, it'll put that shit in there for you. And it'll even put the closing parenthesis in there for you. And here is something else sweet. When you're typing out the function parameters, it's going to tell you what parameters you have. Now, there's two versions of PutPixel. This is not the version we want. But see here, one of two, click down on the arrow. Here's the version we want, X, Y, R, G, B. So even if you forget the order of the parameters or what they do, you get a big hint in here. And this is called IntelliSense and auto completion and it's fucking sweet man hit control shift space and it'll pull this bullshit up and you can take a look at it in here so yeah like i said one of the beautiful things about functions is you can call them however many times you like and i think we're going to do that now we need more we need more pixels ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho more pixels you can never have too much pp pee -pee. i keep mine in a jar under my bed all right, here are my pixels. Do you like them? I hope so. But there appears to be a little problem because we've got all these squiggly red lines and that's probably not a good thing. So I've, I, might, I may have fucked up a little bit typing these guys out. Uh, what I want you guys to do, play a little game here, see if you can figure out where all the mistakes are and what you need to do to fix them. You can pause the video if you want and just take a look here and resume when you're ready to see the answer. All right, let's try to build this motherfucker and see what happens. So we're going to go to build and lo and behold, we get some, we get a failure here. All right, so what are, what are the problems here? Syntax error constant. Now, when you get the list of errors like this, you can double click on them and it'll take you to the place where fresh is the taste. So we can see here that Visual Studio thinks the error is on this line. And what it says here is syntax error constant. And that doesn't give us any good information whatsoever. If we look here, we see we're missing a uh, comma. So let's put one in here and see if that fixes it. And it does indeed fix it. Beautiful. So we fixed one error, let's build. And yeah, it disappeared. Next error, missing semicolon before identifier graphics. So it's underlying graphics here. So you'd think, well, shit, I must have a problem with graphics. I don't know. What is it? Did I spell it wrong? I don't think so. Nope. M expected a semicolon? Why is that? The problem is actually here on the preceding line, although the compiler is going to point you to this line. It's actually, we're missing the semicolon here. It expected a semicolon somewhere before here, and it didn't get one. So it's flagging the place where it encountered the error. But in fact, the problem was up here. It's just one of those gotchas to be aware of. So let's look at the next error. PutPixel is not a member of graphics. Now, I was sure that PutPixel is a member. All these other PutPixels are fine. What could be the difference? And the difference is this one used a lowercase p, and that is not kosher. So we'll fix that, build, syntax error, parentheses, and here it is. And yes, we've got two parentheses here, so these parentheses don't match. Not a good scene. And if we build, now it's fine. Now you might notice here, Maybe when I, if you pause the video like I asked and looked at the video, you might have said, well, this is an error. This line doesn't have a semicolon at the end. That's a problem. And this one down here, you got like weird spaces between your dots. That's weird. But here's the thing about C++. C++ gives absolutely zero fucks about your white space. 
So you can do something totally fucked up like this and it still builds fine. No problems. This is perfectly good C++ code. It looks like shit and if you write code like this and anyone has to look at your code, they're going to fucking want to kill you. But it's as far as the compiler is concerned, no difference between this and what we had before. The only places where white space does matter is, you know, inside of, say, the name of a symbol, like a function name, you put a space, that becomes two different symbols. And inside of this value here, this literal value, put a space there, it becomes two different values. And that's not good. But as far as the uh, places between your symbols and your operators, doesn't matter. White space, no one gives a shit. All right, here's our code back the way we like it. And I have a little challenge for you. I want you to uh, look at this code, look at these numbers, and I want you to visualize what you think is going to appear on the screen when we build this. And then I want you to type these in and build it. So, I'm going to build a solution. Don't peek, make your guess first. And when you're ready, take a look. Here we go. And we get nice little crosshairs in the middle of our screen. A nice little targeting reticle, which is what I was aiming for. And I think that'll about do it for this episode. Now for your homework, what I want you to do is I want you to modify the code so that the reticle doesn't appear here, but appears somewhere in the bottom right hand corner ish area. So you're going to modify the values in here to move the targeting reticle. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button, it'll help me out a lot. And I will see you next time with some more C++.